Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission, they voted unanimously yesterday, adding 16 we reptiles to a list of prohibited species. We believe staff wants our industry gone, 100%. That's not true. In response to two recent high-profile incidents involving Class 1 animals, staff We can drink our and we can have a cheers, because tomorrow, I just woke up in a hospital and it's four in the morning. If anything goes wrong, just take pictures. Okay, guys. Okay, okay, okay. Wow. This is awesome. One of the sketchiest situations I've ever been in. Murky water with a freaking seven, eight foot Cuban croc. <laughs> Chris Gillette can't train a Cuban crocodile worth. Yeah, he can. You were in the water with him. How lucky am I that I stole my leg? You guys want to see the exclusive content of that croc? Go to Patreon, subscribe, support the channel. This is the beginning of Chandler's. Come on, Chandler's. No. Come on, Chandler's <laughs> Wild. Come on, no. is it Chandler's <laughs> Wild. No. Is it the beginning or the end? A few major things have happened while I was working on the video. The major one being Chandler is anti US ARC. After this segment, I'm actually going to break all that down and share with you guys some jaw dropping truths. If you are pro US ARC, or you support the reptile industry in any way, make sure you like this video because I got a feeling there might be some people that might not like this video very much. So as usual, Chandler is shot out of the cannon. High energy, drink, drinking beers with his friends. Even though some would say it's incredibly irresponsible for someone in Chandler's position to be drinking in his YouTube videos, considering he works with dangerous animals and he's about to get mauled by a Cuban croc that nearly takes his life due to negligence. And I know Chandler loves to think of himself as a young Steve Irwin. So let's think about something here for a second. Did Steve Irwin ever drink in his videos? Absolutely not, because he knew more than anyone in the world that he has kids watching him and it would destroy his credibility. So after reuniting with the Venom Bros, Chandler arrived at the Everglades outpost in South Florida with the intention of bringing home a Cuban and a Nile crocodile. So right about here, the energy in the video becomes a little more chaotic. That's a nice start. Now after they pull the Nile hybrid out of the water and secure it, they move on to the Cuban croc, and it's hidden itself in the dirty murky water at the back of the enclosure. Now any reasonable person who values their safety and that of others would have drained the water from this enclosure. And I'm told that he was offered multiple times that he could actually use a pump to drain that water, but he declined. Here is an example of them offering him a pump again, after he had already put himself and others in danger the first time. Listen to how dismissive Chandler is when she's only trying to keep him safe. I got a job to finish. I got you a, right. I got you a pump. Don't, don't oh, cool. Job there we go. Hey, Joe. Long time no see. Long. I love how you just basically walked right past her and said, cool. Dude, you're limping past her with a catastrophic injury to your leg that inevitably led you to being in a wheelchair, and you're acting like you're above using a pump. We can only hope that one of your fans doesn't follow in your footsteps too hard and end up in a wheelchair for the rest of their lives. Okay, so let's get back to the moments right before Chandler nearly ended his own life due to recklessness. As we can tell by Chandler's body language, right before he gets bit, he has no idea how close this Cuban croc is to him. Those poles didn't do him a bit of good. And I think you guys know what happened next. Come on, Chandler, let's wrap let's it, get, let's get this croc out. No, 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 you oh, need to come up we'll, we'll get it, bro. Everyone freaks out and tells him he needs to go to the hospital. Now, the following clips I think are very important to the story, and they were actually removed from the original video. Maybe you can tell me why they were removed. So, and I'll take myself to the hospital after this is done. I promise you, he's, he's a firefighter, he will take me. I, I need to get these crocs and get them they're home. They're getting the crocs for you, Chandler. Hey, but if you slip up, I told you more. you get the crocs. And I'm curious guys, what do you think she was about to say there? She clearly held back something because the camera was rolling. So what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments what you think she was about to say. I, I got stuff I gotta do. I, I understand that. No shit, you have Are you gonna sell some Chris Gillette can't train a Cuban crocodile worth Yeah, he can. You were in the water with it. That's a different story. Chris Gillette didn't join him in the water because he knows the history of the animal, and probably because he didn't want to represent Florida's wildest like some sort of cowboy. So basically, right here, this is my shin. You can see the bone, Patreon subscribers. I'm sorry to the 12-year-olds. Like I was saying, he's 100% aware that he has a child audience. Now guys, I know what you're thinking. Chandler, this is what we're always worried about with the king cobras and the crocodiles and everything. But you gotta understand, this is all I do with my life. I can't do anything else. If you guys wanna see the exclusive content of that croc bite, go to Patreon, subscribe, support the channel. I think we all know how this video ends. Chandler is still sitting in that wheelchair today. And all that time being indoors in that wheelchair, I think it's making him a little crazy. 
because Chandler just openly admitted he was anti-US ARC and he took several swings at the pet industry. Can we stop gaslighting the reptile community? I see some of these influencers and whatnot, these poor people are so stressed right now because they're believing everything that everyone's saying and they think their animals are gonna be taken away when they're not, they're not. Like, come on guys. <laughs> It's gaslighting to get money from people, and it's gaslighting to get us to attack the government. That's Most of the stuff isn't even licensed, and that's why we have invasive species, because any schmuck can go into a reptile shop, can buy a hundred veiled chameleons, or buy it from an importer or whatever, and then let it go, because it's not regulated. So now we have contagues, now we have pythons, we have boas, we have rainbow boas, we have all kinds of down here. It's real. I, I even, I like, like uh, McCurley's, I remember watching him say that this thing, rock pythons are in the Everglades. That's ridiculous. There's no rock pythons. That, dude, you don't even live in Florida. I got buddies who catch them on nests, catching, like, they end up getting like 80 individuals. They get the eggs, they get the mom, they get everything. We have rock pythons, Burmese pythons. We have so much invasive stuff. If it's already here, it's gonna get banned. If you don't want uh, green tree pythons and, uh, and other animals like that to not get banned, you tell your buddies, you tell your friends, you overhear something at a local reptile shop, somebody saying something stupid about starting a pond, Stop that shit. Talk to the owner. Tell him, yo, that guy's gonna go really shit. What the hell are you saying? And if he knew anything about Kevin, you'd know he could fit way more pipes than that in his mouth. He says, don't let clowns like this bait you into attacking government and wasting your money. Which of these clowns should I trust? We can trust Snake Discovery, right? How about Clint? Are you telling everyone they shouldn't trust Clint? He's so trustworthy. This is one of two times I've ever seen Chandler get political. The other video, I think some of you guys might remember. The end of all pets in America. And he dropped it on February 9th, 2022. Chandler and many other content creators actually worked together to bring attention to the America Competes Act, which was essentially a newer version of the Lacey Act, which was defeated by US ARC years ago. Sadly, if you go looking for Chandler's video, it won't be there. One or two things happened here. He either deleted the video or he made it private. Don't worry guys, I archive everything and Chandler's message will not be lost. We want you guys to know that we're trying to speak out. We're trying to collectively get everyone together to speak up, right. speak to your Senate. Donate to US ARC. We're trying to get everyone together to show how big this community is, that it's really affecting a lot of people. A lot of people's personal lives will be destroyed. Their, their homes, everything. Chandler was totally behind US ARC when he was afraid that the America's Competes Act would make it illegal to transport reptiles over state lines, which ultimately would prevent him from bringing new animals into his zoo. They're basically trying to peel back what they've been doing for the past couple of years, protecting us, protecting our rights to transport certain animals over state lines. Your tarantulas, your parakeets, your coral reef, your fish, reptiles of any sort, non-venomous, venomous, all that stuff cannot go over state lines. And if you do it, you will become a criminal. You can get up to $20,000 in fines and up to five years in prison. Here he shows actual compassion for the reptile community. Yes. Imagine like investing high. hundreds of thousands of dollars, or yeah. forget that, just like $50,000 in reptiles and whatnot. And now the animals that you produce, you can't send over state lines. You can't go to a reptile show. And here's what he said a couple days ago. Some of these influencers and whatnot, these poor people are so stressed right now because they're believing everything that everyone's saying. And they think their animals are gonna be taken away when they're not, they're not. Like, come on guys, it's gaslighting to get money from people and it's gaslighting to get us to attack the government that's actually- US ARC is still fighting to protect our ability to transport animals over state lines, which is pretty much all he even cared about from the start. All of that empathy for reptile breeders was about as real as his YouTube persona. Can everyone imagine if they managed to pass another Lacey Act? Chandler would be stuck in Florida with all of the reptile breeders that he turned his back on. So what made him change his tune? Why did he delete his video clearly supporting US ARC? It was most likely because after reaching out to US ARC for help in a legal battle, they had to decline. Chandler wanted US ARC to fight and pay for his personal legal battles with the city regarding his zoo's zoning ordinance, which is not what US ARC does. So they couldn't help him. And Chandler took that very personally. Oh, and yes, Chandler did not want to use his own money. He wanted to get US ARC to fit the bill. He became anti-US ARC the day he didn't get what he wanted. Instead, he started simping for the FWC. If you are truly concerned about something with FWC, you just go on their website and you read what they're up to. If, uh, if you have permits and you deal with FWC, they email you every time there's a meeting coming up, every time there's a workshop. We are all on the same page. There are, there are no secrets. Yikes, Chandler. Many people in your state would disagree with you there. 
Here's a cool moment from the May meeting, after nearly every stakeholder wanted more transparency regarding violations. If there's this many people here, we're not finding it. Hold on, hold on, good question. Staff, can we make copies of this stuff and pass it out? Do you have it? Huh? So, it's a fair request. I don't, I think we should be, you know, we should, can we? Can we get it? It wasn't even on the website at the time, and guess what? It still isn't. Chandler is completely unaware of the tag meetings that are happening. You're not going to find them online because they're not allowed to be recorded. And in these meetings, they are quite literally discussing banning ball pythons in Florida. Clearly, you are under the impression that only non-native species that have an established population in Florida are capable of being banned. You even said it here, last time I checked, exotic venomous aren't established in Florida. You are so misinformed, it's actually alarming. Here's a list of species that were never established in the state of Florida that have been banned. Reticulated pythons, yellow and green anacondas, flying foxes, mongoose, raccoon dogs, southern rock pythons, and there are more, I just am too lazy to list them. So if they're willing to ban these species without a population in Florida, what makes you think they won't ban your king cobras eventually? Any schmuck can go into a reptile shop, can buy a hundred veiled chameleons or, or buy it from an importer or whatever, and then let it go because it's not regulated. Well Chandler, what's to stop someone from traveling out of state and purchasing king cobras from an unregulated state, then driving back and releasing them? You know as well as I do they would survive, as would many other snakes. Maybe Florida should ban king cobras now, before it becomes... Another python out in the Everglades. We don't want another lionfish in, in, in the water. We, you know, we don't want another tegu lizard out there. We're gonna, we're gonna put our foot down. We're gonna go on the offensive. I've, I've let the, the industry clearly know from me, my perspective is that we do not want to wait and, and realize that we approve something that is detrimental to our environment. Let's not forget the fact that every time something gets banned in Florida, they still give you the opportunity to get a grandfather permit to chip the animal and to make sure that it is kept in an enclosure approved by FWC. So when everyone was upset their iguanas were being taken away and takers and stuff, they literally had so much time to go get them chipped to make the proper enclosure to do everything the right way so they can properly keep them under a grandfather license. If you ask me, it seems like Chandler is kissing the butts of the FWC in hopes that they'll renew his permits next year. Because believe it or not, guys, they're watching him. Just speak up. Speak right. to your Senate. Donate to USR. Now, the rest of this video is going to dive into the FWC's latest rule changes and how they've been directly impacted by certain incidents that received mainstream media attention. Wildlife officials now say the apprentice who let this snake out of his sight is facing charges. Now News 6 is getting answers from FWC about the moments before the cobra vanished last month. That snake has still not been found. And shortly after this incident, the FWC made more rules directly affecting venomous keepers, requiring them to create secondary containment systems within their homes or facilities to better protect the general public from the venomous reptiles. They also made permit holders and anyone they employ responsible for the care, use, and possession of the licensee's venomous reptiles. Little did we know, but this was just the start of Florida's war on reptile keepers. Oh, and here's another story that happened pretty recently that sparked more captive wildlife rules. I'm being attacked by a tiger, please, please, please. The man identified as a maintenance worker in his 20s begs for the deputy to shoot him, and then the shot was fired. Authorities say the cleaning service is responsible for cleaning restrooms and the gift shop, not the animal enclosures and that this employee went through an initial fence barrier before sticking his arm through the fencing of the tiger enclosure. Now let's think about this story for a minute. After this horrible incident happened, the Naples Zoo and the FWC made something crystal clear. This man was not involved with the care of the animal. He was nothing more than a custodian that was part of a company's contract to clean the zoo's bathrooms and gift shop. And the FWC also made a statement that they were not issuing any violations to the zoo. So what do you guys think would have happened if the man that got bit was an employee of the Naples Zoo and he was involved in the care of that tiger? Incidents like this only make it easier for the FWC to add more rules to an already heavily regulated industry. Call me crazy, but Chandler's bite was pretty similar to this tiger attack. A tiger and a croc are both class 1 wildlife. One man risked putting his arm into a tiger's enclosure, while the other jumped into muddy water with a known aggressive crocodile. Both of these men required serious medical care, and let's face it, they both could have died. In the last year, there have been multiple stakeholders that have actually witnessed the FWC Commission brag about tracking many social media accounts, keeping the record of violations that could prevent them from getting permits in the following year. 
FWC is an executive branch of government. They only answer to the governor. Look at the toll that these invasive Burmese pythons have on the Everglades. It's just unbelievable what they will ravage. The way they've, they've done it, the regulations, if you get a verbal warning, it can be a violation. If you get a written violation, it's a violation. One violation, you can lose your permit or you cannot get it renewed. If you lose your permit, you have 90 days to vacate all animals from the property. You cannot keep any reptiles. It doesn't matter if they're a permanent animal or not. You have three years, you cannot keep them. So if you have a zoo or you're building a zoo, any of that stuff, it's all gone. So what if I lose my license? I'll just transfer it to one of my buddies. If you are in violation and you try to uh, transfer your permit to your wife or your husband, your son or your daughter, we're not gonna permit that. So we just had a big case where someone was a, was a habitual offender here in Florida and he violated, he violated by go, transferring to family members. He ran out of family members and he finally gave it to one of his workers. And then he was so egregious, he left the state of Florida. The man who brought that herd of zebras to Maryland in the first place, Jerry Lee Holly. He's now charged with animal cruelty and neglect. Holly has been convicted twice for violating Florida regulations on caging captive wildlife. And we've been digging into inspection reports that date back almost 20 years. They reveal Holly's been cited at least 240 times by state and federal regulators since 2004. And of course, we didn't know where he was going. He could have popped up in Virginia. He could have popped up in North Carolina. But there's got to be some database that we can put bad actors names on so that when they apply for some kind of wildlife permit that it, it, there's a red flag that goes up. In this case, we're talking about zebras, but I mean, I, I mean, we could be talking about lions. So in October 2021, when the story broke, the FWC looked pretty terrible after the mainstream media criticized their permitting system. Months later, on January 6, 2022, FWC investigators and biologists went to Iguana Land, owned by Thai Parks, which ultimately ended up with Thai Parks voluntarily relinquishing 89 iguanas. Parks was cited for possession of green iguanas without a permit, possession of untagged green iguanas, and failure to meet caging requirements for iguanas. Now here's another part of that story that didn't actually make it to the news. After Thai Parks had relinquished his iguanas to the FWC, the officers bound them and placed them into plastic containers in the back of an FWC truck while they baked in the sun for hours. And if you were to do this to a dog or a cat, the Humane Society would light you on fire. Kind of like that time they rescued that coyote from drowning, and then people found out they euthanized it afterwards? Coyote plucked from Biscayne Bay near Port Miami. Rescue groups were willing to take it, but the FWC decided to euthanize the animal. It almost seems like when you put the word invasive in front of a species, it's no longer a living creature. Now, if you know anything about Thai Parks, this story is incredibly chilling, considering how respected he is in the reptile world. Shortly after the FWC confiscated his iguanas, they revoked his permits due to a monitor escaping the facility and attacking a neighbor's dog. FWC also stated in legal documents that they had accused Thai Parks of being responsible for about 200 escaped iguanas, tegus, and other reptiles since 2016. Thai Parks' legal team successfully argued in court that the FWC had no proof that any iguanas had escaped his facility. He also successfully argued that he was not responsible for the monitor lizard escaping. The contractor who built the caging was, noting that the FWC did not even discover the flaw in the caging during an inspection. Ty Parks ultimately won this case, and the judge ordered that his license be renewed. But check this out. The FWC chose to ignore the judge's request and denied Ty Parks' his permits, forcing Ty Parks to transfer his permit into an employee's name which must have really pissed off the FWC. This rule adjustment or change is gonna do is not allow you to transfer your license to a, a family member or an employee, blah, blah, blah. As it stands right now, Iguana Land is safe, but you never know, FWC might hold a grudge and might not renew their permits next year over a minor infraction. So if you go to court against FWC and a district judge says, you know, FWC, you have to give them his animals, you have to do this, they could say you can get a ruling and FWC doesn't have to pay any attention to it. They're above the district court. And Kevin's not wrong. As I'm doing all the research for this video, I'm finding endless examples of people having to take the FWC to court when they don't get their permits renewed. There's a ZAA accredited facility in Collier County with zero refractions. They've hosted the president, multiple governors, 
and they are having their permits revoked. They have appealed this and filed a lawsuit. Lieutenant, where were you back there? Told me, you know, that I should have filed an IA complaint. I should have got the attorney general involved for some of the stuff that these officers did. A week and a half after that meeting, my license get pulled because of warnings and violations and said, sorry, we don't see you fit to be have prohibited species anymore. So animals that I've owned for 10 years now, I have to find homes for. Of course, we're gonna go to court for this. And so if you get bitten because of negligence, one of your employees gets bitten, any of the different things, these are all violations. So now it comes open to the discretion of the commissioner and the commission or even your environmental officer that comes out and inspects you. If they decide maybe they don't like you or something about anything that you're doing they don't like, they can record that as a violation and you, you will lose your permit. As it is right now, the only injuries that you need to report are that of venomous reptiles and elephant operators. But around the time this video is gonna drop, that rule has actually gotten even stricter. Captive wildlife permittees will be required to immediately report any injury to anyone other than the permittee or a qualified employee from wildlife in their possession, which requires treatment beyond basic first aid. Injuries to the permittee or a qualified employee must also be reported if they result in serious bodily injury or death. Okay, so let me just break down what this means because it's a little unclear. And it was so unclear that the commission actually asked about the wording at the end of the meeting. So, captive wildlife permit holders and qualified employees must report any serious bodily injury. They later explained that any injury to the general public or a volunteer that requires more than basic first aid must be reported. Oh, and let's not forget about the wording they added about a week after Chandler's bite. In response, staff modified rule language to adjust the threshold, triggering a violation of the rule because of injury only when determined after an investigation that the wildlife was maintained in an unsafe condition or in a manner which results in, in the threat to public safety. In response to two recent high profile incidents involving class one animals, staff proposed adding a regulation that makes it a violation to breach public safety barriers. Call me crazy, but that sounds to me like if you receive an injury due to negligence, you're going to get a violation. It was betrayed by the public that I have to report to you, so that's a violation of HIPAA. That's not a violation of HIPAA. No, sir. Stakeholders also cited the Fifth Amendment, which protects against self-incrimination. The, the reporting is not intended to be an I gotcha. It's an intended to be data gathering, as, as most people have said. The idea is we want to know if and when injuries are happening so that um, we can work with that facility to identify are there deficiencies and what's going on. I do find it interesting that the words data collection have been thrown around more and more frequently by the FWC. It wouldn't surprise me if they were creating some sort of automated system that would identify risks in the animal industry and then dispatch officers automatically. The next bit of legislation they changed was in regards to escaped animals. The escape of a venomous reptile, reptile of concern, class 1 or class 2 wildlife, or capuchin, spider, or woolly monkey will be required to re be reported immediately to the FWC. All other class 3 permittees will be required to report any escapes to the FWC no later than 12 hours after discovery of the escape. Right now, FWC is having meetings. They're having tag meetings. You might not know about them because they don't want you to know about them. This is not public. This is all behind the scenes. US ARC is fighting desperately for you. You must follow US ARC Florida. You must follow US ARC official. We need to see your numbers on all the social media. You need to spread the word. If you're in Florida, if you are a social media influencer and you keep reptiles in Florida, you need to tell everyone what's going on. You need to make sure every leopard gecko keeper knows what's going on. All right, guys, I'm sorry to have droned on about this, but honestly, if you love our community and you love your fellow keepers, we're all on the same team. We need to rush to the support. We need to start talking. We need to get this out there. We need to support USR. We need to actually challenge the FWC, how these people are conducting themselves, and what we're asking for is due process. We're asking for science. We're asking for give and take. We're asking to actually be part of the conversation. FWC is dictating regulations and ideas upon us. We are responding and we're not being heard. The more of us commands a louder voice. We need to catch the attention of Ron DeSantis, the governor. So I'm asking everybody, if, especially if you're in Florida, please sign the petition to get Ron DeSantis aware of what is actually happening within the commission. Please be part of the team. All right, everyone, I haven't left the house in about a week, 
So I'm going to wrap this video up by pleading for you to like it and leave us some comments. Share this video somewhere. And if you want to meet Kevin or myself, come visit us at AnimalCon. We'll be there the 26th to the 28th in Orlando, Florida. I also heard a dirty rumor that Chandler was banned from Gatorland and Wild Florida. Anyone know if that's true? 